Now I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna be it's gonna be a bold statement. These are one of the best nano fish, bar none. I'm, I'm saying it, I'm putting it out there. They are amazing. Now in this video, I wanna talk about what I think is one of the coolest nano fish species out there. And I've been able to observe them over the last few weeks, months. I don't know how long this tank's been set up now. Um, yeah, not sure actually. You can go watch that video, the Chili Cube, I think I called it, on my channel. So if you wanna see how this tank was created, you can go watch it there. I honestly think anyone with a nano tank probably should consider these fish first. The reason I think these little rasboras are one of the best ones out there is a lot of nano fish, they are low down the food chain and they're normally a little bit scared, a little bit reclusive, they'll hide in the plants. These chili rasboras, after I'd given them a bit of time to settle down into the aquarium, they are honestly out at the front all the time, buzzing around, waiting for food. It's, it's really weird. They're a very confident small fish that just adds so much energy and colour to an aquarium. Chili rasboras actually come from a little group, little family group called Bararas. Bararas. I think there's a lot of R's and A's in it. Now this little family group I think have five different species in it. It's five that I can remember anyway and it's these guys which is Bridgetae or Bridgetae, Maculatus, Mera, uh, Urothalmoids and Navus. Anyway, I've probably butchered those uh, sayings and how you actually say it, but there is five that are known. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually a few more species than that in the Bororas group. I've not looked it up, so there might even be six or seven now. There's five that I regularly encountered in the hobby. Now, the reason that I think there might be more is because they are from little rivers and tributaries, and they are small. So I wouldn't be surprised over the next few years if there's a few more that get discovered. There might even be some now that just aren't readily available in the hobby. Being that there's five or so species in this group, we're gonna be talking about the chilies today. The rest of them are all fairly similar. They are all small. They've all got that orangey red coloration. So if you are after chili rasboras, it's worth doing a bit of research on Google, having a look at pictures of each different one and making sure you're buying the right species. It's not that any of the others are bad or horrible. They're just a little bit duller, I suppose, and different colors. The chili rasboras have got that ruby red coloration. So if you do want that brightest fish, it is well worth doing a bit of research and making sure you're getting the right ones. When these fish are juveniles, to the untrained eye, they can all look very similar. They are a mixture of sort of orangey, coppery colours with black spots and stripes going down through their sides. So at a quick glance, you think you could be buying chilies, but you could be buying one of the other species that might not get so red. These tiny little fish come from tannin-stained streams, rivers, tiny little swamps out in Indonesia. The waters here are normally quite slow moving and quite thick with vegetation, providing these little guys with somewhere to hunt and to hide. They seem to be very adaptable when it comes to temperature. I've seen numbers anywhere from about 22 degrees all the way up to about 28 degrees Celsius, which is 72 to 82 Fahrenheit. I think I'm getting better at the conversion. I think that's right. As for water parameters, I've heard of these fish being in the wild at pH is down to like four. I would not be aiming to achieve that in the aquarium because it is just gonna be hard work. I'd be aiming definitely on the softer side, so the seven and below. But that being said, I have seen people keeping them seven and above, and they do seem to be a very adaptable, quite strong fish once they're acclimatized. All the fish in the Bororas group, I might still not be pronouncing that right, but all the fish in that group tend to be on the smaller side. The little chili rasboras normally max out at around the two centimetre mark, which is like, what, three quarters of an inch, maybe? Somewhere around there. And they've got that really slender body shape. So they're not a bulky fish. They really don't produce a lot of waste. Even though I said at the start of this video that these fish are quite bold, I would still keep them in a group of at least 10 or more. The more you're going to have, the more confident these fish are going to be and the more you're going to see them. With a decent sized group, you are also gonna get males and females displaying and you're just gonna get a lot more character out of these small little fish. When choosing the size of the aquarium for your chili rasboras, really to a point, bigger the better. They don't tend to do well with pollutants and nitrates and things like that and they tend to be a little bit more sensitive to them. So like I say, bigger the better. Anything around the 30 litre mark and upwards is gonna give you enough space for a decent little group of these guys 
obviously you're not going to be wanting to keep them in a 500 litre aquarium. Well, maybe you are, but you're going to need a lot of them to make that aquarium look full. Now, another thing to think about is you're not going to want a great deal of flow in the aquarium. You're not going to be wanting to push that water around because they aren't very strong swimmers. The other problem that you're going to get with a really strong filter is the inlet grill on that filter might be a bit too big and these being small fish might get sucked up by it. On the tank behind me, I actually run a piece of foam over the filter grill just to make sure that none of them can swim up there. Hardscape wise in the aquarium, it's really a personal choice. I'd make sure the rocks aren't going to push the pH up, so things like river cobbles and inert rocks like that are going to be perfect for them. As long as they've got enough space to dart back and hide in, then you're going to be fine. So woods, rocks, maybe even some leaf litter is going to be perfect in there. Planting wise, again, it's just a personal choice. For me, I would look at things like java ferns, anubiuses, bucephalandras, maybe some crypt corns as well just because they are going to be a low light tolerant plant that is going to be better for the setup for the rasboras. They do tend to like a slightly dimmer aquarium and they do tend to be a little bit more outgoing in that. So floating plants are another good thing to sit on the surface to diffuse that light. Again, the more places you've got for them to dart back to and hide, the more they're going to feel confident coming out into the open water of your aquarium. When picking out tank mates for chili rasboras, there's two things you want to bear in mind. One is the tank mates can't fit the chili rasboras in their mouths. And two, the tank mates aren't that boisterous that they're going to get to the food first and they're just going to make the chili rasboras retreat into the plants and you're never going to see them again. If you follow those two rules, the majority of tank mates will work out fine. There are absolutely tons of small shoaling fish that would fit in well with a chili rasbora setup. Just off the top of my head, anything like ember tetras, maybe some clown killi fish, even other smaller rasbora species, they're all going to fit in well and all going to require the same sort of setups as these little guys. If you wanted something a little bit more characterful in there, I'd probably look at something like your smaller gourami species. Things like honey gouramis and sparkling gouramis would be a good suit for them. Another fish maybe is some of the baddest species if you wanted something a little bit rarer and a little bit more interesting. But really again, it's just following that rule of as long as it doesn't fit in their mouth and as long as it's not going to bully them, it should be absolutely fine. When it comes to bottom dwellers and cleanup crew, personally for me, I've got the little rosy loaches in with them and I just like it. It matches the colour of the fish, they work really well together, they're both peaceful. It's brilliant. But if you're not too worried about like similar areas, you could have a look at some of the Pygmy Corydoras. Again, it would be a well-suited fish, small, tiny, really peaceful. They would work well together. Then if you're looking at some of the more algae grazing fish, Otto Sinkless would be a great addition to the tank that would give you a little bit of a hand in cleaning up, but don't forget to feed them. And also a lot of your shrimp species. So cherry shrimps and things like that, they're gonna work really well together. Tiny fish can be a bit of a pain sometimes to feed because of their small mouths. They don't always take harder foods and bigger foods very easily. But as long as you're using something very small, almost like a powdered granular food, they get on absolutely fine. I found these just eat about anything that goes in there as long as it's small enough for them. So I crush up other granules just into a sort of a powder and sprinkle that across the top. The other thing that they do quite like is frozen foods. So things like a baby brine shrimp, maybe cyclops, maybe daphnia, any of those will be readily accepted by them and give a good variety to their diet. Breeding chili rasboras can be quite easy. You will see regular spawnings if you're keeping your fish happy, healthy, well fed, well water changed. You can see regular spawnings. I've seen sort of spawning behavior in the tank behind me. I don't think anything's come of it yet, but you never know what might happen. The problem with them spawning in a community aquarium where the adults and maybe other fish are still residing is they do scatter eggs everywhere over foliage. So those eggs are probably just going to end up as food. And if anything hatches out of those eggs, again, it's just going to be food for the adults. You never know, though, with a densely planted aquarium with maybe some leaf litter and things like that, you might get the odd few babies survive but most of the time they do just end up as food. If you want a higher rate of survival on the babies or even want the challenge of trying to rear the babies, then a species specific breeding tank is gonna be the way to go. A fine mesh positioned across the bottom of the aquarium, a few centimeters above the bottom is gonna be ideal. What's then gonna happen is when they spawn, 
the eggs that don't stick to plants will drop through the mesh into the safety of, well, essentially where the adult can't get. Now you're probably gonna want to filter the aquarium via a sponge filter so that nothing gets sucked up into a power filter. And you're also gonna want to furnish the aquarium with spawning mops or maybe some Java mosses so that the adults have got somewhere to spawn onto. Now the adults being only two centimeters long, the babies are gonna be tiny. So feeding them can be a bit tricky but things like infusorias and then moving them on to things like baby brine shrimps eventually can work. I have seen a few people really crushing up fine foods and getting that in there and saying they've had a decent success rate with raising fry on that, but it's not always the case. So it's gonna be a trial and error thing of trying as many microscopic foods as you can and seeing which one works. But you've got to remember that you're gonna have to keep it clean because otherwise the babies are just not gonna tolerate any waste in there. I don't think there's much else you'd need to know on chili rasboras. I think that covers the main things. I found them extremely hardy, to be honest. So if you are after a nano fish that's bright, colorful, and fairly easy to keep, I think these are gonna be your best bet by far. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been useful. And maybe this will spur you on to setting up a tank for these little fish, or maybe even adding them to a setup you've got already. But they're definitely high up on the list of my nano species now that I'd recommend to people. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.